Good morning, everyone. Jim Chastain with Easy Power. Uh, this is our weekly session, refresher session. This week we're going to be focusing on Smart Duty. Smart Duty is a feature inside of Easy Power, uh, part of the short circuit module that uh, does its thing quietly in the background and uh, seldom do we have to kind of interface with it. But I uh, want to verify that you understand what it is doing and when you see that there is an alarm or a warning that uh, you're able to facilitate or the changes that it's suggesting or indicating that the system's deficient in. So please, by all means, if, uh, if you can hear my voice, let me know if the sound is working okay. We've changed headsets, so there is a little bit of concern on my part. Okay, so last week we talked about asymmetrical and symmetrical fault currents and the fact that at any time there's a fault, for at least a very short period of time, there's a combination of AC and DC elements, and this produces what's regarded as an asymmetric fault or an asymmetric current. Likewise, motor contribution during a fault has an asymmetric quality to it. Again, this is for a short period of time. The DC component's short-lived, and it's uh, for that period of time, it actually raises the current that it, the system's exposed to, and this is recognized as asymmetrical current. The problem is, or the issue is, if we ignore, even for that brief period of time, the fact there's an extra current surge, the breaker ratings can be exceeded. Now, as we kind of discussed, this is, in fact, primarily due to one of the key functions of inductors, and in the case of a motor, a rotating magnetic field, but they try to resist a change in current. So if there's a reduction in voltage that uh, implies or suggests that the current's going to start slowing down, the inductive qualities in the system basically kick in and for, a, for that period of time that the field is still uh, collapsing either in the motor or in the inductor, there will be an extra current bump, and we refer to that as a DC component, and you'll see by the drawing here over time that declines. So that's what we spent our time on last time. It turns out, though, the manufacturers have to be able to predict and deal with the fact that there could be an asymmetric element to the default, and so when they test their equipment, they use a specific standard that's been evaluated and is referred to as the, and you'll see in the notes in Easy Power, is an ANSI standard with reference to symmetric current. And the way that they do it is they, they specify the power factor, which is a measure of the phase shift or in the inductive content of the circuit that's uh, as it, the test is being conducted. So for low voltage power circuit breakers, there's a standard that includes a power factor of 15%. Molded case uh, in a certain range have a l larger power factor as part of the test. Between 10 and 20 amps, it's, it's larger still as far as the, the power factor component. And, and so this applies even to, to fuses and to high voltage breakers. So what Smart Duty does, it's actually an expert system for verifying breaker switch and fuse duties. As it does this, it compensates for the X over R differences between the test environment as the device was tested by the manufacturer and the X over R environment of our circuit where we're actually going to be applying the device and where we expect it to be able to withstand the current surge or the fault currents that will be produced in our maximum fault. And what this, what this is all about is that we're trying to determine the maximum current at each bus and each uh, protective device so that we can be assured that the devices will operate properly and the bus will withstand 
the surge of current and not uh, deform or melt or some other catastrophic uh, result that would prevent the system's protective devices from operating as they should. So Easy Power takes all this into account. It looks at the max current through each of the devices and then flags us if it exceeds the rating and also give us a warning if it's within a certain designated band. So when it's looking at duty evaluation for high, breaker, uh, high voltage breakers, it's using momentary current uh, for the peak making capacity and it's using interrupting current for the braking capacity. So this is essentially the peak rating when we go to close the breaker, the high voltage breaker. And if for whatever reason it's in an automatic reclosal mode, we need to make sure that it can withstand the surge that we'll get during that first half cycle of a closing. Likewise, if it's interrupting, where if the, if the fault is continuing, then it has to be able to withstand the interrupting current and be able to open and operate properly uh, some five cycles or more past the, uh, the initial connection. Low voltage breakers are primarily um, measured for symmetrical current in a momentary or the first half cycle phase. Fuses likewise in the half cycle and switches in, in momentary current. So what we're going to do is look at uh, the tool and see how Easy Power can deal with uh, the duties that may kind of we may encounter in this type of a system. So what I have here is a basic uh, typical utility values of 39K and a 15X over R rating coming from the utility supply. We have our high voltage breaker. We have a typical transformer here of 1,000 kVA. We're going to complete the rest of our circuit with the switchgear wizard. And here we want to, uh, and again, this reflects no power systems design expertise. We're strictly illustrating how the tool uh, works in typical applications. So what we're looking at is three downstream feeders all hooked up with cables. And we're going to be using motors. Uh, in this case, we're going to be using all molded case circuit breakers. So as we build our system and, uh, and populate it, I like to start at the load side. And let's say for, for whatever reason, this system was built some time back and uh, originally had a couple high horsepower motors as loads. And here we see for a, a typical 500 horsepower under these conditions and these voltages going to require about 600 amps of, uh, of full load current. When we go to the short circuit tab, we calculate uh, the tool recognizes that it's greater than 50 horsepower and that the environment will be a very large X over R. And the system as we start out has these identical uh, motor loads and let's say that uh, they're both hooked up with 50 foot cables. If we calculate the ampacity we see that this is a 310 amp capacity so our uh, facility engineers doubled up on the cable loading and our uh, I need to start with the breakers. Our breakers, our typical values, our typical manufacturer we use for molded case is square D. And in this case, we were using I-line type of breakers. And because of the size, this is a, you can use a 1,200 amp uh, style breaker. And because these are 600 amps, we're going to size them for the 600 amp plug. Verify that the by clicking calculate here and pulling up a number, this indicates that the manufacturer's data sheet is verifying that the uh, breakers will work properly up to 50,000 amps. So that's their interrupt rating. And then we have a typical uh, trip setting for short circuits. So we're going to take the same breaker to the second one. And again, the system, well, I'm not worried about coordination now. So I'm going to put the same style breaker up here, but because it's it's 
going to be handling two of these large motors. We'll put the larger bucket in there, the larger sensor and plug. It's still a 50K interrupt rating, and we'll slow it down as far as the trip settings. Okay, so that's pretty typical. So we've got about 50,000 amp protection uh, capability in these particular cables. So let's say we come along some number of years later, and we have a small motor we're trying to add to the system. Let's say this is a 20 horsepower motor. We see its full load current is just under 30 amps. Its sex over our environment is relatively low at 2.89. And to carry that type of a load, we have, uh, it has to, we're going to run it 200 feet, the cable 200 feet across the building. The, uh, this uh, 350 KCMIL is plenty large to carry the load. So we're going to not worry too much about that. We want to make sure we, we pick the same breaker for this style bus that we're using. So we're going to use square D I-line. And because it's a 30 amp breaker, we should be able to use something OK um, that rates at 18,000 amps. And we're going to set it up for a 30 amp trip. So we should be in good shape. All right. So first thing we want to do is go to short circuit, make sure we haven't left any uh, elements out. We're going to be looking at a three-phase fault, momentary current, and we're going to fault the buses, which all of which I did up here on the top focus banner. So I can see I have, in this leg, I have 21,600 some odd amps during a fault on, on bus four. Likewise, on bus five, on bus six, I have 14,000 amps. So if I have a 50,000 amp breaker here, it should be not having a problem with the duty. Likewise here, and if I have an 18,000 amp uh, rated breaker here, I should be in pretty good shape. We got 20,000 amps coming into the from the utility if bus three were to fault. So by first order approximation, I'd say we're in pretty good shape. Um, go ahead and check the instant energy. Looks like everything's pretty kosher as far as uh, what's being applied to each of the buses, the calculations. So I want to double check my equipment duty. And this is where I'm essentially applying the smart duty elements. And as I do that, I notice I have a couple red, red elements on my one line, one of which is this breaker over here. So the first place I go to is my arc flash hazard spreadsheet. And I can see from looking at bus six, on bus six, I'm seeing 14,000 amps bolted fault current. The arcing current is 8,400. And yet, smart duties is telling me I'm exceeding the rating on breaker BL3 by over 72%. So what's going wrong here? So let's go back to my, uh, we'll look at the high voltage breaker in a second, because it's really not, not giving us the indication of the, the currents at that level. When we look at the one-line diagram with a momentary current, we can see that we are looking at, so what, what are the units, first of all? I'm going to right-click, go to my short circuit options, and I'm going to look at my one-line output, output, and I can see that the current that we're indicating is um, symmetrical current. All right, well, so let's see if anything funny is going on with asymmetrical. So let's go ahead and apply that as a unit. So we can see that things are higher. We're at 27,000 amps here, which still doesn't bother a 50,000 amp breaker. 27,000 amps here, which, again, shouldn't bother us. We're only showing 15,000 amps for this leg, but this 35,940 is a little bit worrisome on the bus. And that makes me concerned about where this fault is coming, because I still don't see anything erroneous or, or out of line going through this bus on a fault. So let's look at our reports. Let's go ahead and create a low voltage uh, momentary report. Let's create uh, an expanded equipment duty report and see what we get. Let's also do interrupting high voltage while we're at it. 
Right? By doing that, we should be able to come up with an equipment duty report that says, again, we'll look at bus one and two later. Okay, so bus three says that we're exposing BL3, which was tested for asymmetrical, ANSI symmetrical current at 18,000 amps, that we're exposing it to 30,952 amps during the first half cycle. So where is that going to show up? So let's go back and look at our momentary low voltage report. And here we can see on bus 3, it's tested at 480 volts. The standard that the standard symmetrical currents that it's seeing is 26,654, compensated for asymmetrical values. This is a 35,940. All right, and that still doesn't match what what we're looking at here. What we're showing for a molded case circuit breaker between 10 and 20,000 amps, though, is that its duty rating is 31,067 amps. And that still doesn't match up with this 30,954. So where does that come from? Let's go back and look at, so what I'm concerned about is the difference between this duty rating for the first half cycle and what this should be able to withstand. So we're saying 31,067 and it's seeing 30,954. Well, the difference is this 114 amps that's coming back from the load when we have a fault on the bus. So sure enough, if I take 114 amps from this value here, I'm going to end up with the, the equipment duty rating that we're having a problem with. Okay, so we see where it's coming from. question is, how did I miss it when I was kind of looking at this the first time? And it kind of jumps out at you, and from our original arc flash calculations, we have a considerable amount of impedance in this line. So what we're really looking at for this branch current is after it's gotten through that 200 foot of cable. And so we really don't see, we really don't see what this breaker is exposed to. Uh, as, as you recall, our definition of smart duty it measures both the load side and the line side fall current on any bus in a system. And so what I'm suggesting is if we go back to our database editor, save everything, let's delete this cable that's in here, and hook this bus up right at the breaker. So now when we fault the bus, now we see that in fact, if a, if a fault were to happen at or around the connection point between these cables and the load side of this breaker, this breaker would see all of the current that's uh, being uh, added to the bus or all of the fault current that the bus is being exposed to less the 114 amps that's coming back from this particular motor. So Smart Duty is taking care of that for us. So. Again, I, I would have missed it if it had just been up to my uh, calibrated eyeball. Now let's go a step further and go back to what's going on with this uh, BH1. We see a 55% and a 95%. When we look at our equipment duty report, what, what it's telling us is that this breaker, which is rated for 40K during the first half cycle, is exposed as capable of handling 108,000 amps. This is the rating. At the interrupt uh, level, the five cycle range, it can handle 40,000 amps and an interrupt in three cycles. What it's actually seeing during a fault, and let's go back and kind of look at this. Go back to my fault current. It's seeing something like 59,497. All right, same kind of thing. We've got a couple hundred amps coming back. So it's actually seeing 59,485, which makes about a 55% range on the, on the half cycle point. But at, at interrupting or five cycles later, it's actually being exposed to 39,000 amps, which is very close to the 40,000 amp rating. 
and we would come to our and so we have our warning level set to 90 to 10 percent and consequently the breaker is alert or alerting us that at the interrupt level it's up to 97 percent of the rating of the breaker so even though it's well under the the uh, duty rating at the momentary point it's very close to the duty rating for the interrupt and breaking point or the break peak breaking rating for this high voltage breaker okay hope that all made sense so let's kind of go back to where we were left off so what we look at the equipment duty report which again is is part of the smart duty feature gives us the exposure of any type of breaker so these are the adjustments that are made by smart uh, smart duty based upon the type of breaker and the ratings that its uh, manufacturers telling us and it gives us the compensated values of what any breaker on that bus would be exposed to and that's exactly what the equipment duty report is showing us so by using the low voltage momentary report and the equipment duty report we can kind of scope out what's going on so what did we learn first of all last week we understood that lower impedance uh, transformers will generate a higher asymmetrical cont contribution for loads near the transformer itself ironically utility stiffness has less effect on uh, system asymmetrical content and in the future we're going to look a little more carefully at how that applies to generators especially with respect to the generators placement uh, and the transformer set up in, in a system higher circuit impedances like our 200 foot cable run reduces this asymmetry at the load uh, but easy power smart duty compensates for the x over r differences it also accounts for the breaker orientation when calculating exposure uh, both on the load side and the line side of any breaker on a bus so the advice and the I guess the admonition is to make sure you understand any elements that are showing as equipment duty faults and not just discard them out of hand because uh, it is taking a lot of information into account that's not intuitively obvious just looking at our one line diagram so that pretty much completes what I wanted to cover today appreciate everyone attending um, we will take questions here in a minute I do want to remind folks that available on the easy power website there are dozens of tutorials and examples uh, each week we have this refresher live on Tuesday mornings and then every other week we're having more advanced technical topics also um, actually we've already we've already um, performed or completed the training in Toronto we're about to start training in uh, Atlanta so I encourage anyone that's in the area that hasn't registered or wants to attend to make sure you join us also available if this is uh, the first exposure you've had to easy power arc flash that it's not something you have to undertake on your by yourself it's relatively simple to have an engineering evaluation or assessment of your first studies and effectively um, for just time and materials based upon an engineer looking at your files we can give you an assurance or help you correct errors that maybe you're making in your uh, your assumptions or your mechanisms or the processes that you're using to use the tools appreciate everyone attending